Hey guys, it's Alex here from alexfergus.com and today we're up to round eight of my 2021 Red Light Therapy Body Panel Series. So in this round, it's something new. It's something I haven't really looked at much before. Uh, some of my later reviews on these Red Light Therapy Panels, I have touched on it. Uh, it definitely wasn't in my 2019 body panel comparison though and it's something that only a few people talk about uh, in the Red Light Therapy space, but I think it's quite important. And that's what I'm referring to as hotspot testing or the polka dot effect that some of these panels have. What is this? Well, I'll put up some clips uh, on screen now so to show you exactly what this means. It's when you get concentrations of light um, in certain areas and then big drop offs next to it. So it means really what's happening if you're using these panels on your body you may get a, a ton of energy in one part and then not so much in another part especially with these newer panels how we have multi-wave uh, leds so we have you know three four five uh, wavelengths in some of these panels you see that like a certain wavelength is very strong here but very low here so it means like if you're buying that panel because it's got eight ten nanometers and you want to tap into the benefits of that and you think that's going to be exposed to the whole body it mainly be like certain parts especially some panels that only have like five or ten percent of the leds with some of these alternative wavelengths right you're not getting a nice blend of light it's something i noticed in my 2019 body panel comparison review i noticed it twice I noticed that when I was testing or when I was looking for peak irradiance, and I still notice this now, when I move my spectrometer around, you see massive changes in, in light, not on all panels, but some panels, like you'll see a really high reading and then you move a centimeter to the right and it drops right off. It's like, whoa, what's going on here? And then secondly, just when, you, um, when you're filming these or when you're standing next to them and you look at the body and you see all these like polka dots right on the body it's like huh this is interesting so over the years I've uh, you know questioned this a little bit more and I decided you know what I'm going to start incorporating this into my reviews and of course include it in this big comparison series now if you have watched some of my reviews because by the way out of these 12 red light therapy panels hanging behind me I've reviewed pretty much all of them and the ones that I haven't I will be soon so be sure to hit the subscribe button check out my past videos in the more recent reviews, I have been testing for Hotspot. I've been filming it and uh, given a score. I should mention if you've watched those uh, or you've pulled up my red light therapy data sheet, which I'll put a link to below, those scores may be a little bit off uh, based on how I'm gonna score it today. Uh, a few things I realized, I wasn't quite set up properly. Uh, the camera wasn't set up for filming the light properly. So a lot of them look really good when by eye it wasn't um, nearly that good. So. I've fixed everything up for this comparison. I've got quite a fair scoring system in play, which I'll, I'll talk to you uh, soon. One other thing I should mention is as you go further away from the panel, the hotspot effect is, le is less of a problem, right? Because more of that light blends. Of course, if you stand really close to the panel, you're getting you know, very concentrated light. But I'm testing these panels at six inches. At six inches, you'd really expect a nice blend of light, right? You don't want to see that there's a massive cluster of, you know, 630 nanometer light here, but then there's hardly any 630 over here, right? You want a nice spread. That's what an ideal panel should have. What gets interesting now though, in 2021 with these new generation panels, a lot of companies are using multi-wave technology. That means they're using the 660 and 850 nanometer LEDs, but they're also incorporating 810, 630, 940, all these other LEDs as well. So that means there's more wavelengths coming from that same surface, right? So it's only natural you're gonna see some peaks and troughs. The other thing that spice things up is the um, advancement of dual chip LEDs. So one of the panels behind me, I believe, has dual chip LEDs, and that means it, it's emitting both red and near infrared light from the same bulb, right? So that's pretty cool. That actually helps with that hotspot problem. The other thing is beam angles. Now, beam angles is something that I'm not scoring panels on or anything like that, because I've realized it doesn't seem to matter. I used to think, you know, 30, 30 degrees would have quite a pronounced hotspot and 90 degrees wouldn't. That's not true. So I don't really even touch on it anymore, um, but it does, it does impact all of this stuff, right? If you're looking for a panel, you want a panel with a nice even spread of light. You don't want to be standing next to it and see that, hey, you've got a, like an orange spot here, a red spot here, and then nothing down here because that's the near infrared. You want a nice even blend. You want to know that you want to know that you've purchased a panel that has three wavelengths or four wavelengths, and your whole body, your whole treat, the whole treatment area is being treated with these wavelengths, right? So that's what I'm doing 
in this video. I'm testing these panels. Now to test them, what I've done is I've got a ruler and I've hung a white piece of A4 paper. Uh, it's about six inches, uh, six inches off the ruler, right? I hang it. Now all I do is I go up and push that ruler against the panel and we film what it looks like. Now based on uh, some prior tests and I did on this, it's very clear that um, there are some massive differences with these panels. And what's interesting though, you know, I thought that all of the panels that had multi-wave technology, i.e. multiple wavelengths, would perform badly, right? Because you've got a big spread of uh, different types of LEDs. But that's not necessarily the case. Some of the good performers did have three, four, or five uh, different wavelengths in their panel, so that was good. And in fact, some of the bad performers had only the 660 and 850, so it is quite interesting. Two final things I need to mention. Some of these panels that use multi-wave technology, i.e. they use more than 660 and 850 nanometer lights, they may only have a few LEDs with these alternative wavelengths, right? So I know, um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but one of these panels only has 7% of one of these different wavelengths. That's going to mean if you've got a panel with like 100, 200 LEDs in it, you might only have, say, 14 LEDs of this specific wavelength. So naturally, you kind of get hotspots based on that wavelength, right? Because it's gonna be hard to blend that all the way in. So that's the problem with companies that only do a few percent or a few LEDs in some of these lesser known alternative wavelengths. Secondly, as these panels get so much more powerful and the radiance figures on these panels, uh, I tested them, I think it was in round two or three. Uh, the numbers are off the charts compared to my 2019 uh, body panel comparison, for instance. As the power irradiance goes up, it means you can stand further away from the panel, like nine inches, 12 inches, and still get a massive dose of light, which means you're getting a better spread of light as well. So that's, that's like another thing to remember. If, if it's a really high powered panel, and it's got a bad hotspot treatment um, figure, it's not necessarily a deal breaker because like I said, you can just step back another few inches, still get a heap of energy, and you're getting a much more blended uh, light at that distance. Now what I've done from a scoring point of view, I've ranked these panels into three, great, okay, and poor. Uh, and I've grouped the scoring and um, at the end of this round, what we'll do is we'll, we'll see the overall scores and then we'll update our score scoreboard to see who's, who's coming in number one as we get close to the end, uh, 10 rounds. If you haven't seen the other rounds yet, uh, be sure to go back to the start. If you wanna see the, the next few rounds, be sure to hit subscribe. Okay, so this video, when it comes to ranking, I'm actually gonna do it slightly different. I'm simply gonna go around the panels here and we're gonna test them and I'm gonna give my grouping, whether it's great, okay, or poor, then at the end of it, we'll do the overall rankings, okay? Usually I say, this is the worst and work up to the best, but we're gonna do this one a little bit different. All right, so first up, we have the Infrared Max. Uh, this is putting out, um, I'm, I'm gonna class this as okay, middle of the pack here. It's not too bad, uh, though it could be improved a little bit. You do see a, a bit of a uh, difference between where the red's hitting and where the near infrared's hitting. Okay, so next up, we have the Red Rush 720 Classic. Uh, I'm also giving this an okay score. It looks really, really good. However, if you look at the panel, there's about a three or four inch big bar in the middle, um, which is impacting you know, how that light is being um, uh, exposed on the body, right? So, bit of a bummer there. I mean, if it wasn't for that, this would probably be a better scoring panel. Now we have the Jimbo Red Reboot, and um, this has to be a great because, yeah, I mean, look how, look how good that light blend is. And remember, there's a couple wavelengths in here. This isn't just your 660 and your 850. So uh, the guys at Jimbered have done a good job here, especially because this panel does have a little bit of separation between the LED clusters. It's only about an inch, but that would typically impact the light transmission. Uh, whatever they've done behind the scenes, it's worked really well here. So good job, Jimbered. All right, now we have the Light Path LED panel. Yeah, I'm giving this a poor rating. Uh, it's quite evident that you can see where the hotspots are. Um, and you've also got a bit of a gap in between the clusters. It's only about an inch, but um, it's not helping. Bit of a bummer because yeah, this has been a good performing panel to date. All right, now we have the Blue Blocks Hive Max. Now what's interesting about this panel is they use dual LED chips. So it only emits 660 and 850 uh, wavelengths. So it's not a multi-wave panel. But if you just run six, 660, all of the lights glow. And if you just run near infrared, all of the lights glow. Pre in most panels that don't use dual chip, one bulb is 660, the other bulb is 850 for instance. This in theory should give you much more blended light. And it is true, it's not, it's not 
perfect. I could get a little bit critical and say, well, there's some tiny little hot spots. You know, you can sort of make out where those LEDs are, but still uh, knowing that all of the LEDs are putting out, you know, both, both, both wavelengths of light, it is good. So I'm giving them a great. Now we have the Mito Pro 1500 by Mito Red. Now what's interesting is this panel uses four wavelengths and the wavelengths, are, uh, the power is evenly spread between all four wavelengths. So, so we've got 25% going to 660, 25% going to 850. And there's two other wavelengths, which I've forgotten off the top of my head. I think it was 630 and 810 perhaps. Uh, I can't remember, sorry. But they're all evenly sp spread 25% of each. Um, and what's really interesting though is, is it looks really good. Like there's a good blend of light here. So um, yeah, well done, uh, well done Mito Red. Okay, now we have the Juve Solo. Now this only uses 660 and 850, there's no multi-wave, but uh, I have to give this a poor rating because you can see, you can see those little circles, you can see uh, where those rings are of the red light, you can see where the near infrared LEDs are. Remember this is six inches back, right? So. Yeah, um, disappointing there from Juve. All right, we now have the Solbasium Optics 180. This is also a multi-wave panel, uh, and you can distinctly see the different um, color hotspot concentrations there. So a poor rating there. Now we have the Rug Pro. This is this is really good. I'm really happy with this. So I'll give it a great rating. All right, now we have the Biomax uh, 600. Back in 2019. This, I think they were the only company that did multi-wave um, panels back then, right? When I did my 2019 comparison. And that's when I first noticed that, huh, you know, you're seeing these, what I call polka dot effect on my body, like as I stood next to it. But as we've seen now from some of these um, panels, such as the Mito Red, Mito Pro, it is possible to get a nice blend of light with multiple wavelengths in it. So um, unfortunately, it doesn't look like much has changed with the new generation Biomax. You're still seeing those hot spots, those, that polka dot effect. So Biomax have 80% of their light going to 660 and 850, and they've got three other wave wavelengths making up the um, remain, remaining 20% of the LEDs. And you can see where those ones are. You can see that yellower orange hotspot um, blended with the red. So yeah, that's a blow for Platinum, and um, I have to give them a poor rating. All right, now we have the red light advantage. Now what's interesting here is this panel has 300 LEDs, but it's, it's quite small. I mean, uh, if you actually look at it and say compare it to the um, Mito Red, Mito Pro, which also has 300 LEDs, it's quite a lot shorter, right? So that means there's a larger concentration of LEDs in a smaller space. So in theory, that should make it look much better from a light transmission hotspot point of view. And I can say that yes, that's exactly what happens. I, I'm giving that a great read, rating. Uh, it's very hard to see any distinct um, hotspots in there. It is only 660 and 850, but again, we're just purely looking at the hotspot, how that light blends. So well done, Red Light Rising. And then finally, we have the Saito LED Triple X. Uh, this, uh, I think I have to put this in the middle of the pack and give it an okay rating. Okay, so now that we've done all that, we can rank these panels from best to worst. Uh, remember they're grouped into great, okay, and poor. So we have four panels that scored poorly, uh, Light Path LED, Biomax 600, Solbasium Optics 180, and Juve Solo. We have three panels that scored okay, the Infrared Max, the Red Rush 720, and the Cyto LED Triple X. And then we have five panels that scored great. Uh, Red Light Rising Advantage, the Mito Pro 1500, the Rug Pro, the Gemba Red Reboot, and the Blue Blocks Hive Max. Cool, so now what we can do is we can add these scores to our overall standings and see how it changes things. All right, and would you look at that massive, uh, massive gap now between first and second place. Mito Pro, uh, with their great hotspot score, have yeah, jumped out in the front, 75.5 points. And Biomax, who they were neck and neck with in the previous round, have slipped back not only to second, but second equal, because Infraredi have, um, have improved with their OK score. So, wow. I mean, these two have been pretty much neck and neck since round two, round three. Um, and with only two more rounds to go after this, that's a huge move by Moto Pro. So, yeah, very, very interesting. Uh, and I knew that was going to be an issue for the Biomax based on the review testing I had done because I knew that there was no changes with the hotspot. Um, so, yeah, very, very interesting there. And it is good to see them for Eddie. I mean, they're surging ahead like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with how they're doing in this com um, competition. So, good job. The gap between uh, the top three and fourth place is still quite large, 10 points there. So, uh, Light Path has sort of slipped back a little bit there. But we're still quite close in the middle. Uh, it's still anyone's game for the for the middle placings, 
And um, down the bottom, we see Juve still in 11th place and Blue Blocks on uh, 12th place. All right, guys, that's a wrap. That's the end of this round. I hope you've enjoyed it. Any questions, comments, or feedback, leave them below. Uh, if you did want to purchase any of these panels or find out more about them, be sure to check out my review on them. I've reviewed most of these or go direct to the uh, company's website. If you want to buy any of these, be sure to use discount code Alex, A-L-E-X. It will save you, it will save you some money. Um, so yeah, thanks again for watching. Be sure to give me a thumbs up and a like. If you want to be the first to know about future videos in this series, be sure to hit the subscribe button. All right guys, I'll see you soon.